Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unsportsmanlike Conduct. I'm Christian Stoinev. Good morning from me to you on this Monday morning after the NCAA Final Four. By the time you watch this, it won't be morning time. But anyway, good morning. Uh, well, we have to talk about the Final Four because obviously last night was a women's championship game, which was super exciting. It came down to the very end. And I got a little rant I got to go on on some of the play that I saw last night at the end. Oh, man. Arizona was so close. And I think they missed the golden opportunity to be crowned champs. Um, to the men's Final Four, which happened this past weekend. Baylor and Gonzaga, they played tonight in the championship game. And I'm excited for this game. I don't really watch college sports that much until the very end when it gets really exciting. So for me, just the moment and how big these championship games tend to be. And, you know, the pressure and then the shots that happen. Jalen Suggs, anyone. So those moments are super exciting and super awesome. And so... That's why I'm excited for this championship game. But we can't look ahead to the men's championship game until we look back to the final four that was. So we'll start with Houston and Baylor. All right, so Baylor taking on Houston. Houston starts off good, getting the first points of the game. Uh, but then Baylor obviously answered back. Here they're up 6-3. to three. Houston still obviously hanging in there. This is super early in the game. They get a bucket here. We're going to show them some love here early. Another three ball. Put them up eight to six. Uh, but yeah, then Baylor took control here. Uh, the layup and the foul. And they're up by ten at this point. And Baylor's just running away with it. Here we have a corner three that's missed. Rebound. Outlet. Wide open three ball again. Uh, Baylor up by 13. Still in the first half. And Davion Mitchell with a beautiful pass across the court. Uh, another three ball and like I said Baylor I mean this just wasn't that close of a game look at this beautiful pass jeez what a pass reverse layup and then we go to the second half where it's it's pretty much a blowout and you know once Baylor took the lead they never looked back uh, they just looked like a professional team out there wide open three ball here for Davion Mitchell uh, puts them up by 20 and uh, that was pretty much the game Davion Mitchell just played a great game another corner three ball this kid's got a weird shot but it goes in so Baylor advances and they're in the championship game tonight uh, pretty much a blowout in this one so Baylor moves on to the final to the championship game and me I like to start with the most boring game first because that was just pretty much a blowout and now we'll get to the exciting game, which is Gonzaga and UCLA. Mind you, UCLA was ranked 11th against the number one seeded Gonzaga. All right, so the number one seeded Gonzaga taking on UCLA. Uh, here they get the three ball to go up early. And this, this game, I mean, it was close way throughout. Here, the, the flopping defense didn't really work out. Uh, tie ball game here, still pretty early in the first. Uh, and this kid had a great game um, for Gonzaga. Honestly, he he just plays a very old school game. It seems like, but it's efficient. Um, you know, Zaga was it looked like UCLA was close from actually extending the lead in the in the beginning of this game, but Zaga would just keep answering to every run that UCLA was going on. Uh, so we move to the good part of the game, though, the second half. So Zaga's down by three. Here we get the layup. Now they're down one. At this point, they're up. Um, Corner three ball right here puts UCLA up by two with under three to go, and it was crunch time. And then this to try to win it, what a block. What a defensive stop there uh, for UCLA. They get the ball back with 10 seconds left, and they dribble the whole bunch of the clock away just to set this up, which is obviously an offensive foul. That's a charge, so we are going to overtime. Opportunity squandered, and then like I said, look at this move. Big boy move right there. Uh, gets the bucket plus the foul tied at 83 back to him right back to him another bucket right there puts him up by two uh, and at that point Gonzaga uh, goes up by two they hit a three to go up by five but UCLA answered now UCLA is down by two the clock ticking down go to the hole missed it got his own board goes up all right tie ball game are we going to a second overtime just listen Sucks for the win All right, so two things to take away from, from I mean, these two games that led to the eventual championship game that's tonight. Baylor, if you didn't notice, yes. I mean, I think that Davion Mitchell looks 100% and plays like Donovan Mitchell 
the number 45 on him, the swag, the way he plays the game. So, you get, I mean, that's got to be his hero, right? They, like, it's just too similar that there's a D Mitchell and there's a J Butler also on this team. So, uh, maybe, you know, a little foreshadowing as these guys are trying to become like these other guys that are already in the NBA. That's beside the point. But Baylor obviously was the better team against Houston. They move on. They're taking on the Zags. And let's talk about that game because that game was incredible. If you watch that game, this is why you live to be a sports fan. This is why we watch these games and we sit through two and a half hours of sometimes pointless basketball because of moments like this. Jalen Suggs did that for us. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to bring up in this game um, that will actually be perfect transition to the women's uh, championship game is that at the end of regulation, when UCLA gets that rebound with like 10 seconds left and they have a shot to win the game in regulation, the game is tied and it's this ISO ball that people run at the end of quarters and regulation that I just think cost your team so much. Now, obviously, if it's like the end of the half or the end of the third quarter or whatever, like you get away with it because the missed shot, whatever, nobody cares later. But in these situations, like run a play. This is why you practice. I get that people don't want to do this because there's a high chance of turnover or whatever. But the whole point, the whole reason you're playing the game is to try to execute what you practice. So if you're going to be too scared of failing because of the mistakes that could happen for what you practice for, then like what's the point of practicing and going out there? Like use that. You spent time in the gym, sweating, putting in the work for these moments, run a play. These guys, I feel like, and coaches too, put them in situations where they'll just run iso ball. And a lot of times it's just, it's a clanker. And we saw that twice. I mean, this just this weekend, like obviously with UCLA, you have the ball, you have a chance to win the game and you go on iso ball and it leads to a charge. I mean, and that's not even solely on the players because the players start getting this mentality of, all right, I have the ball, there's seven seconds left. I have to make the play here. I have to make the shot. And, you know, one of the things that when Kawhi Leonard used to play with Greg Popovich in the Spurs, I don't remember the exact wording of this, but there was a question asked, I think it was to Pop, about when he calls plays for Kawhi. And he said, no, I don't call plays for Kawhi. I call plays for the Spurs to score. So that means he puts the ball in Kawhi's hands, but the whole mission is for Kawhi's team to score, not Kawhi to score. So when there's a play call for one of these guys to have the ball on the elbow and let the clock wind down and then score, that doesn't mean he or she has to shoot. You can make a play. And so uh, that UCLA game, I think they missed an opportunity there in regulation. Obviously, it leads to the charge. And then there was only like less than a second left, so nothing happened there. But then Jalen Suggs, obviously, whew, this kid, if he has a big championship game, He's putting his name in that top two, top three player conversation. I mean, it's already pretty much there, but I'm just saying, like, he's had a hell of a tournament and that game in a national spotlight. This is why these games are awesome. You kind of see, like, the real and the fake. You see the guys that will be able to play at the NBA level under pressure in big time moments. And, you know, that, you know, when he had the ball with three seconds left, that's different than having the ball with 10 seconds left. And he threw up a half-court shot. Like, there was no play to be made there, but just throw it up because you don't have time left. But I'm talking, the little rant I just went on is when I'm talking about these guys just dribbling the clock out, dribbling the air out of the ball, just waiting until it's time to shoot the game winner. So with that, we'll transition to the women's game, the championship game, and just to see this because it was... So Arizona and Stanford... um, they were in the women's championship game of the NCAA, and this is how that game turned out. All right, so Stanford's the favorite. Early first quarter, they get on the board first, and I mean, Arizona has been the Cinderella team this tournament, and so they were, I mean, super close. This game was pretty close. Uh, here, Aaron McDonald puts Arizona on the board, and you know, Stanford for a while, they looked like they were going to run away with it here they go up by 10 on the three-pointer but you know Arizona would stay there um you know Haley Jones did everything she could here with the nice bucket on the cut 
And then here comes Arizona at the end of the third, pulling within a three-point game. And this is the end of the game right here. So, Haley Jones, bucket, and one. They go up four. Here goes Ari McDonald. After the steal, she gets fouled. She missed the first free throw, made the second. Here, pass it right back, right back. Uh, no, she went for it herself. All right, but she hit both free throws. So, now they're down one. And this is what I'm talking about. Just wasting clock here if you're Stanford, which I get it. You're trying to dribble some time away, but... Come on now, this is horrible execution. You pass the ball to your teammate with two seconds left. What is she going to do? Leads to a turnover, and this is the final play. Everyone knows it's going to Aaron McDonald. She's looking, looking, teammates wide open, nothing. Crazy jump shot that almost went, but Stanford is your champion. All right, so Stanford hangs on and wins against Arizona. Now, Arizona was the three seed, so they were underdogs already. Stanford comes in with a third with a 30 and 2 record on the season. So they're the favorites. But this game was there for the taking. And I understand that Ari McDonald is a star for Arizona. She's their best player. I get it. She's their scorer. I get it. But man, the last three minutes of this game, I didn't see anybody else on that Arizona team shoot the ball. It was every time Aaron McDonald's taking the shot, Aaron McDonald's taking the layup, Aaron McDonald gets fouled to the free throw line. It was literally watching a game that was one on five at the end. And Stanford couldn't execute. They call a timeout, they come out, and they got a shot clock violation. That gave Arizona the chance to take the lead, to take the championship trophy. Now, I don't want to take away from Stanford because the Stanford women obviously have been great all season. Haley Jones won... Uh, the best player of the championship game, the MVP pretty much. And, you know, she had 17 and 8 in this game. And, I mean, she played awesome. This, I mean, this, this, they played, they, they played a tough Arizona team and it's a championship game. It's going to be hard. So props to them. They take, they take care of business. They win. Congratulations to Stanford. Not trying to take away from that. But Aaron McDonald, a couple times here at the end, like, it's hard to figure this out and kind of say it, but, Yes, she might have been the reason that this Arizona team is where they were at, but she was also the reason why I think they lost this game. Listen, when that timeout was called, when there were like 10 seconds left, everyone knew that she was going to shoot the ball. And when it becomes that obvious, use it. She was literally guarded three on one. There were over two seconds left. And she had three teammates wide open. I should say two because the other one, Haley Jones, was playing the block. And she had to pick between two on the left side and the one girl on the right side. So I don't know how. I mean, obviously, like I said earlier, these players get in this mindset of I have to take the shot. And I mean, the shot almost went in. So, I mean, that would have been crazy. But you had a layup with over two seconds left when the. Three defenders come at you, pass the ball. At worst, your teammate's going to get a wide open 15-foot jump shot, which is better than you taking a contested 20-foot shot with three hands in the air trying to block it. And, I mean, so look at the screenshot. I mean, right there, she's wide open. Pass the ball. There's 2.6 seconds left. So, I mean... Uh, I mean, I, I know that obviously, like I said, she's our best player. And I mean, they are college students, so it's hard to criticize. I feel, obviously, I feel bad to criticize these, these players. But if they want to be pros at this level, it comes with the criticism. And that was a play right there that should have been made, just like UCLA had, had the chance and they blew it. So I don't know. I mean, props, like I said, props to Gonzaga for hanging on and winning and to Stanford for winning. But these two underdog teams had every opportunity. They had it right there. So, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to wish them bad. I hope they have great careers in basketball. And I think these are learning opportunities for them. But, um, but there's also just the reality that, man, there was a play there to be made. That's why the greats watch film. They watch tape and they realize the mistakes they made. I'm sure these kids will look back at these mistakes and say, dang, for the next time I need to do this better. But I don't know how even the coach for Arizona didn't tell her like, hey, we're going to use you as a decoy because everybody knows you're 
that you would be shooting this shot because literally you've shot the last 10 shots for our team. So uh, that that's just a rant I had to go on because I just, I was watching that and even live, I was like, pass the ball, pass the ball. And then the clock's just winding down. And then obviously she just takes this crazy difficult shot, which like I said, almost went in. So, and they, they kept showing the her parents during this, the, the last couple minutes. And man, that's gotta be such a tough feeling as a parent, watching your kid in this situation, you know, it's their moment. And then you're like helpless. I mean, you could you could tell the dad was like so nervous watching this, and he was just like, ah. So I mean, one day, hopefully, when I'm a father, I get to you know see my kid and whatever it is that they choose, whether it's sports, whether it's chess, whether it's music, whatever, to be in those moments because I mean, these kids are, you know, in the they're succeeding, they're succeeding in life to be in these situations and to be playing in these meaningful games. So props to them for being where they're at. Um, but that, God, that's gotta be such a gut wrenching feeling for, as a, as one of these parents watching this. So, um, anyway, that, that was the college game. So tonight Zaga, um, two number one seeds, Baylor and Gonzaga, exciting basketball. I'm just going to try to see, obviously I care about the NBA as you can see. So I'm just going to be looking out to try to see which one of these guys, maybe the Raptors can draft because I'm trying to see who will be good pros. Uh, and who can obviously succeed in the next level. And while watching that and seeing how they play, I hope we get an exciting ending and a dope game. So, um, I mean, I think it's tough. I think Gonzaga uh, will win just because I just think the magic of, of just that shot, hopefully, and their season, they're undefeated, uh, carries their momentum, and they can get the win. But sometimes those kind of emotional victories can kind of, put you on such a high that you have a hard time getting back to normal. Uh, and I've seen it happen with my own teams before when there's like a miracle play that happens. It takes a while to kind of like get your emotions back down and then focus for the next game. But, um, you know, the coach, coach, uh, coach few has been there and, um, you know, he's, he's experienced. So maybe he can talk to these guys and tell them, Hey, the job's not done yet. So we'll see. Um, other than that, we're going to keep this, uh, episode super short. I just want to talk about the college games with the, you know, the, the championship game for the men's tournament, tournament being tonight. And then I'll come back later with another episode and we'll see what's going on in the NBA. Uh, Joel Embiid is back. Jokic is still putting up numbers and getting MVP chance now that the Denver Nuggets have fans. So a lot of exciting stuff going on in the NBA and the NFL draft is creeping up closer. And baseball is back. The season has started. So we'll talk a little baseball as well. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll have someone on. Uh, talking sports with me. So until then, thanks for watching this episode. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Subscribe and uh, see you later this week.